Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to Big Monday. Today I want to address an issue that a lot of people don't recognize as a, it, it can be a problematic for them, especially when you're doing repairs like around the home and around the farm. You know, and I'll use chain link fences and gates as an example. That material, because it's outside, typically it's galvanized. And of course, this is going to apply to things other than galvanized fences. Anything with galvanized uh, surface on it uh, is very, very difficult to weld. In fact, almost impossible to weld it with the MIG welding process. So what do you do? You've run out to the store. You've bought yourself a little MIG welding machine. You've successfully made other projects around the house. And now you've got a, a repair on something that's galvanized. And you just meet with no success whatsoever. Well, the reason for that, and in fact, what we've discussed in the past was the, the MIG wire, the S6 MIG wire with the scavengers and so forth in it to overcome rust and mill scale. Uh, those, that's all important stuff. But in MIG wire, that doesn't have enough scavengers uh, to deal with all the, the, the zinc and everything that's on a piece of galvanized material. I've gone out and got a piece of galvanized here. I'm going to make a weld on it in a little bit here to uh, show you what happens when you try to use a conventional MIG process with this. So uh, let's make a weld, and we'll see what happens, and then we can uh, discuss what we can do to get around that, okay? So let me get the safety gear on, and we'll make a weld. Yeah, you can see, not very good bead appearance. We've got some porosity. That's, uh, that's just not going to be passable for a, a decent weld on galvanized material. So let me, the way we have to deal with that is not use the MIG process. I'm going to change the machine over to the flux cord process because those, those flux cord wires have more scavengers and more things ingredients in the flux core to help clean up and get rid of the zinc and the other things that are causing us to have a bad weld with the MIG process. So we'll change it over and we'll be right back. Okay, we've changed the machine over. It's now set up for flux cord wire. Uh, the major things I had to do is change the drive rolls to put the neural drive rolls on that flux cord wire requires. Uh, I also changed the welding polarity. MIG welding is done with DC positive polarity. Cord wire welding is done with uh, DC negative polarity. The other thing I'm going to change is my welding technique. As you know, with MIG welding, you're pushing the arc along ahead of you as you're welding. The, the, the procedure is somewhat the same, except that this time, instead of pushing it along ahead of me with cord wire, because it's a slag-covered process and you're relying on the slag to protect the molten puddle from the atmosphere, you're going to pull the puddle along and go in the opposite direction. And, and drag the molten puddle along with you, all right? And that gives you plenty of slag coverage, which is, again, what protects the pool, the molten pool from the atmosphere. All right, so here we're gonna do a little bit of welding here on this galvanized, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see that we have a much better outcome than we did when we tried to MIG weld on the galvanized. So here we go. All right, there's a weld on galvanized. There's slag coverage, scrape that off. Wire brush it too. That's one of the downsides of the flux cord process. You do have the slag to deal with and clean up, but as you can already see, as opposed to the one we did with MIG that had, was full of porosity, here we have a nice smooth weld bead, no porosity, uh, everything you need to have a successful weld. All right? Okay, now I mentioned that we uh, changed the machine over to flux cord process, and we just kind of glossed over that a little bit because you can find more detail about that in one of our previous videos. And there's, all you have to do is access the link in the directions below, and it'll take you to that video where we get in much more detail what needs to be done to change over from MIG welding to flux cord welding. All right? So hopefully that'll take care of you for this week, and we'll see you next time on MIG Monday.